Welcome back to BNC Live. We are taking you for a live look outside right now at the U.S. Capitol. There was been a black women march on Capitol Hill. We just showed you moments ago women being arrested, arrested for marching on the Capitol to protest restrictive voting rights that are being passed around the nation uh, and also responding to the blocking of the For the People Act in the Senate. Let's listen in. Are you kidding me? I'm madder than I've ever been. Death or vote. You're going to have to vote. And I'm telling everybody, if the black people are stopped from voting, everybody loses. It's not a black battle. It's a democracy battle. All the dumb Democrats need to be out here. All the people of, of color and all the people of righteousness need to be out here. It's not a black battle. It's a moral battle. It's a moral law. They're trying to take everything from us. If we don't vote, we die. If we don't vote, Jim Crow. If we don't vote, separate bathrooms. If we don't vote, slavery. There you go. That's a good real call. You can hear the passion in that woman's voice uh, talking about the necessity, the need for people to stand up for voting, voting rights laws. This is a day of action on voting rights. Uh, our Ariana Venice covered it for us at the top of the hour, and we have been watching civil rights uh, activists there who have been arrested, some of them. We're going to get you details on that as we get it coming in. But I want to bring in now our chief legal correspondent, Dr. Laura McNeil, to get some perspective on what we've been seeing here. Uh, Laura, tell us, what are your thoughts? You know, you said it wrong when you said black women again are at the forefront of the fight for equality. This time, it's the right to vote. Um, my first reaction was uh, pure joy uh, just and, and just proud, seeing those sisters out there saying, you know what, we're willing to get arrested. I believe, although not It looks like actually, hold on, uh, Natasha Brown, I think, is speaking right now, Laverne. Humanity. We're standing here not because we believe in a system. We believe in us, and we believe in our own agency. And we believe that in our agency, we have the right to make a decision. Any decision being made about me and my family, I have to be a part of that decision-making process. And so anybody that's watching this, every day there are decisions that are being made in this place that are impacting our children, that are impacting our families, that are impacting our community. And you have a responsibility to stand for it. You have a responsibility responsibility to stand for what it is that you believe in. So no, this isn't a matter of what is right or what, what should you do or does it matter or not. Anytime I'm operating the fullness of my power because God gave me that, not the U.S. Constitution. It is God that says that I have agency, that gave me that because my life matters and all the people in my community, our lives matter. And if we believe that, we have to stand on it. We have to act on it. And so that's why we're here at the Senate and we'll continue to go to the Senate and we'll go to the White House and we'll go to the Congress and we'll go to the streets. We're going to go wherever it's going to take for us to go because we ain't going back. Yeah, and, and there's no excuse for anybody. So all those pillow watchers that think they have rights, all those couch warmers that think they doing something, all those people that want to wax philosophical about whether or not black women are to be here, right here, right now. We have a word for them. It's time for you to get up and join us. And it's not just a black thing. It is for every one of us. This democracy, I thought on one day, it was about one group of people. Now I have an understanding that there's a group of people in power here that will perish. They will give up on democracy to keep power. Now anybody that understands that that's what time it really is so it is not about a partisan thing it is not about a black thing and it's not just about my interests this is about some of us have bled into this and all of a sudden when we get the right to have some majority ruling it's going to be a new day I think not we have come to Washington. I traveled here from Georgia. I'm sitting in hot 
DC to say not on my watch. No, but but they're doing this not because we lose a family. We are winning. We are changing the political landscape in this country. We are changing why this fight is about. This fight is because people are stepping up. This fight is because people came out and voted last election. Deborah. Yes, step over. <laughs> So we are glad that people are here, but we're going to keep coming out. We came from Georgia, and we're bringing back buses. We will continue to come out. We helped to get the vote in Georgia, to help to get two U.S. senators, and to help to flip the state. And we will not be deterred. So we came up from Georgia. You're watching these women live in Washington, D.C., pleading with people to understand how critical the right to vote is, how critical it is for families, for communities, for not just black people, but for everyone trying to get people to understand how important this issue is. Black women leaders, civil rights activists, civil rights leaders, regular women, some of them arrested during this march on the U.S. Senate, trying to make the American people understand how important and how critical it is at this moment in history that people understand why this fight is so critical. Do we still have Dr. Laura McNeil with us? We do, Laverne. I don't know if you can hear me, but, you know, what's so powerful about what these sisters are saying is they're appealing to everyone, to all Americans. They're, they're reminding me of the quote from Dr. King that injustice, the threat of injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. When you threaten our right to vote, every American's right to vote is threatened. And that's the message they're trying to give and that, you know, we do need to get up off our couches, our sofas, and we need to march like we did during this, this march for the right to vote. Laura, I want to go now to our Washington is out there live right now. She's actually been covering this story for us. Ariana, good afternoon. Can you give us an update on what you're seeing out there? Yeah, uh, right now we're standing outside the Senate building. We were inside the moment those uh, supporters pushing for voting rights, the moment that they were arrested. And then we're standing by here with Ms. Cora Masters Berry. She is the wife of the former mayor here in the nation's capital. And you weren't arrested. Why did they not arrest you? And, and tell us about your ongoing fight to protect the right to vote here. Well, I'm 76 years old. So 40, 30, 40 years ago, I was on the front line with water hose, dogs, arrest, and we got our voting. 1965 Voting Rights Act and 1964 Civil Rights, hopefully to full enfranchisement, and now they've taken it all back. And if people don't wake up, they're going to look up and we're going to be back to Jim Crow. Because once you take somebody's right to vote, you, give, you take their right to voices to be heard. The people that are elected will be the people who will continue to repress and suppress until we'll be right back to Jim Crow. Okay. All righty. We um, saw you crying. We saw you crying. What was going through your mind? Well, I was very upset, one, because I'm just so mad because this is still going on. I mean, my grandchild will probably be fighting this fight. And I was also upset because they would not allow me to be arrested. And that disappointed me.